Hi, hello. Hi. In, in response to a request and from a comment left under one of my previous videos, somebody wanted to know about the herb ginger. Uh, so this video, I'm going to talk about ginger, and there's a lot of interesting things to say about ginger, including how it affects workouts if you're involved in fitness or bodybuilding. But let me t first talk about some of the health aspects of uh, ginger. But let's talk about ginger itself first and foremost. Ginger is a flowering plant. Plant it originates in Southeast Asia. It belongs to the the uh, Z, uh, Zingbarosafe, I can't even pronounce it family, but it's related to turmeric. The rhizome or the underground part of the uh, of the stem is the mo is the part commonly used as as a spice. When you use ginger as a spice, it's often called ginger root or simply ginger. It can be used fresh, dried, powdered, or as an oil or juice. It's a common ingredient in various recipes. Now, what's some of the medicinal properties of ginger? Well, the mo most powerful uh, substance found in ginger is called six ginger oil. It has a number of, of uh, it's been used in alternative medicine for many years. Uh, it has very, very powerful anti-inflammatory, antioxidant effects. It can help to reduce oxidative stress, uh, which affects many different types of diseases. Uh, some of the uses of ginger oil, it's been used for years. Probably the most famous use of ginger oil, I'm, I'm not sorry, ginger oil, ginger. Ginger oil is the active ingredient. The most, most po popular and long standing use of ginger has been used to treat nausea, especially morning sickness. Morning sickness is something that happens to women when they first get pregnant. It's uh, uh, basically caused by the stimulation of certain hormones, it, get, it makes them feel nauseous. Uh, and and ginger has been shown to be very effective against various types of nausea. Uh, it, it helps prevent nausea and vomiting in people who are undergoing certain types of surgery. It can also help chemotherapy. That's a chemotherapy when you undergo a chemotherapy for, let's say, cancer treatment. Unfortunately, nausea is a common, uh, a common side effect because the chemotherapy uh, attacks all fast-growing cells, uh, you know, tumor cells. No, Bruno, no. Tumor cells tend to be the most uh, rapidly growing cells in the body. Unfortunately, there's other cells that are rapidly growing, such as that in the hair and that which lines the gastrointestinal tract. No, Bruno. He, he doesn't like when I talk about ginger, Bruno. You have to excuse me. I don't know why. But anyway, uh, when, you, when, you take, uh, when you're undergoing any kind of chemotherapy, it, by attacking the gastrointestinal cells, it can cause nausea. And they found that if you give ginger, it seems to help relieve that. Uh, but it's a very effective for the morning sickness that a lot of uh, pre pregnant women feel. A review of 12 studies, a review of 12 studies that included a total of 1,278 pregnant women, when they gave them between 1.1 and 1.5 grams of ginger, it significantly reduced symptoms of nausea. Uh, another thing is, uh, Bruno, I'm going to put you in the video. Be quiet. Ginger also. Ah. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Oh. Hold on. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Okay. Ginger is also plays a role in weight losses. Bruno, he's acting very badly. Bruno, relax. Relax. It can play a role in weight loss. Uh, a 2019 literature review concluded that ginger supplementation significantly reduced body weight, the waist-hip ratio, and hip ratio in people who were overweight or obese. A 2016 study of 80 women with, who, who were obese found that ginger could help reduce body mass index. Body mass index is garbage. I mean, it goes by, it's a, it's a, a, a way of indicating obesity by comparing waist size or hip size to to height, it's garbage because it doesn't take into consideration muscles. So body forget body mass index, but they like to use it in studies as a measure of obesity. It's absolute garbage. Just about every Mr. Olympia competitor would be considered obese by a body mass index, but that's another story. Uh, uh, the ginger seem to uh, lower blood insulin levels, which is good because high insulin levels are associated with obesity. Uh, in the study uh, of weight loss, the uh, study participants received about two grams of ginger powder for 12 weeks. A 2019 literature review of functional foods also included that ginger had a very positive effect on obesity and weight loss. Uh, the animal studies on, on, on ginger also showed tremendous effects on weight loss.
Rats and mice who consume ginger water or ginger extract consistently saw decreases in their body weight even when they were fed high-fat diets. Uh, uh, as to the mechanisms, it's, it, it maybe maybe ginger helps to increase you know, calorie burning or reduce inflammation. They're not really sure of how it stimulates uh, weight loss. Ginger can also help with uh, osteoarthritis. It's very good for anti-inflammatory uh, diseases. Uh, of course, uh, in, uh, you know, osteoarthritis is a degeneration of the joints, leading to joint pain, stiffness. Uh, one literature review found that people who use ginger to treat their osteoarthritis saw significant pains and in, in, uh, reductions in pain and disability. Uh, the only side effects were some people couldn't take the taste of ginger. Uh, some people got a little bit of stomach upset. 22% of the people in the study dropped out because they couldn't handle ginger. Some people just don't like the taste of it. Study participants received between 500 milligrams and a gram of ginger each day for anywhere from 3 to 12 weeks. A majority of them had been diagnosed with osteoarthritis of the knee. Another two, uh, the, uh, hold on a second. Another two, another, another study from 2011 found a combination of topical ginger, mastic, cinnamon, and sesame oil helped to relieve the, the stiffness or pain associated with uh, with osteoarthritis. So, also another another uh, benefit of ginger is it can lower blood sugar and improve heart disease risk factors. Uh, it might, in other words, might help prevent diabetes. A 2015 study of 41 participants with type 2 diabetes, when they were given 2 grams of ginger powder per day, it lowered their fasting blood sugar by 12%. It also, it, uh, ginger uh, also dramatically lowers hemoglobin A1C. That's a marker for long-term sh- blood sugar levels. Uh, anything over, I believe it's 5.7, is indica- indicative of pre-diabetes or full-blown diabetes if it's over 6.4. Uh, in this study, HbA1c was reduced by 10% over a period of 12 weeks after ingesting uh, uh, ginger, which indicates it has anti-diabetic effects. There was also a 28% reduction in apolipoprotein B, apolipoprotein A1 ratio. That's related to cardiovascular disease. And a 23% reduction in, in, in melanodialdehyde, or MDA. That's a byproduct. That's, uh, when it, that's elevated, it's indic- indicative of, ha- of a high amount of oxidative stress, which is related, related to cardiovascular disease. <clears throat> As they say, a high ApoB, ApoA1 ratio, and high MDA levels are major risk factors of heart disease. So, um, a 2000, uh, unfortunately, 2000, uh, a 2019 literature review found that ginger significantly reduced hemoglobin A1C in people with 2 diabetes, but it didn't have any effect on fasting blood sugar. So. Uh, ginger can also be used. Some people like to use it to treat indigestion. Uh, it's believed that delayed uh, uh, emptying of the stomach is a major driver of indigestion. Ginger has been shown to speed up the emptying of the stomach. It's, in other words, if you have any kind of stomach problems with a meal, ginger will help. Uh, people with functional dyspepsia, which is indigestion with no known cause, they were given either ginger capsules or placebo. One hour later, they were all given soup. It took 12.3 minutes for the stomach to empty in the people who received ginger. And it took 16.1 minutes in those who received placebo, which indicates definitely that ginger helps uh, emptying the stomach, which would relieve uh, this uh, kind of stomach pain that some people get when they eat. Uh, uh, hold on a second. Bruno's moving around. Uh, can, uh, ginger also for women, it can, help, uh, it can help also help reduce menstrual pain. Uh, in a 2009 study, 150 women were instructed to take either ginger or non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen for the first three days of their menstrual period. The, th- the three groups received four daily doses of either ginger powder, 250 milligrams, mefanamic, a- me- mefanamic acid, which is a, a, an, or, or ibuprofen at 400 milligrams. Ginger re- reduced pain as effectively as the two drugs. More recent studies have also concluded that ginger is more effective than a placebo and equally as effective as drugs such as mefenamic, a- mefenamic acid and acetaminophen, caffeine, ibuprofen, or novafin. These things are just a mouthful, I'll tell you. It can, uh, ginger, uh, another way that ginger helps with the cardiovascular disease, it can help lower cholesterol levels. Uh, high levels of LDL, bad cholesterol, are, are linked to uh, increased heart disease. Uh, LDL is only uh, dangerous when oxidized. A uh, 2018 study of 60 people with elevated blood fats or hyperlipidemia 
30 other people received 5 grams of ginger pasted powder each day and they saw their LDL bad cholesterol levels drop by 17.4% over a 3 month period. That's almost comparable to drugs like statins. While the drop in LDL is impressive, uh, they, they, they actually took the 5 grams of ginger is a pretty high amount. So you'd have to take a lot to get those benefits. Um, uh, in an older study from 2008, people received 3 grams of ginger in capsule form also saw significant reductions in most cholesterol markers. Their LDL bad cholesterol dropped by 10% over 45 days. Uh, also, ginger contains a substance that uh, maybe help prevent cancer. This is uh, ginger oil, which I mentioned earlier, 6 ginger oil. Uh, a 28 study of individuals at normal risk for colorectal cancer. Two grams of ginger extract per day significantly reduced pro-inflammatory pro signaling molecules, molecules in the colon. Uh, unfortunately, when they did a follow-up study, they didn't find the same results. Uh, that's the problem with science. The studies have to be replicated before they draw a, any kind of conclusions. But there is some evidence that ginger may be effective against other gastrointestinal cancers, including the most deadly type of gastrointestinal uh, which is pancreatic cancer and liver cancer. Like, it could also help against, uh, protect against breast cancer and ovarian cancer. Uh, that's preliminary research, however. Uh, ginger may also affect, uh, positively affect brain function uh, because of its effects on uh, two, two of the markers of uh, brain, function, brain degeneration or increased oxidative stress and chronic inflammation. Uh, they, they are among the key drivers of Alzheimer's disease and other age-related cognitive decline. Some animal studies suggest that antioxidants and bioactive compounds in ginger can inhibit the inflammatory responses that occur in the brain. Uh, uh, ginger also can enhance uh, brain function. A 2012 study of healthy middle-aged women, daily doses of ginger extract was shown to improve reaction time and working memory, which would make it kind of a smart nutrient. It can also, uh, animal studies show it can help protect against age-related decline in brain functions such as mi minimal cognitive impairment, uh, minimal cog cognitive impairment, also known as senior moments, where you kind of forget where your keys are. Ginger might help that. Can, uh, ginger can also help fight infections. Uh, it, 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 it helps to uh, uh, inhibit the growth of various types of bacteria. It's very effective against the oral bacteria that leads to gingivitis and peritonitis. Those are inflammatory gum diseases that cause you to lose your teeth. Fresh ginger, may, that's why they probably put ginger in some types of toothpaste. It can also, it might be effective against a disease called, uh, caused by the respiratory syncytial virus, which is a common cause of respiratory infections, especially in children. So uh, that's about it. I think that covers, oh, I'm sorry, uh, I, I mentioned, I left off, almost left out the exercise part. A study by the University of Ginger found that a daily supplement of ginger reduced the amount of muscle pain caused by exercise by 25%. In this study, both raw and heated ginger was tested, and both had the same result. In another study, four grams of ginger supplementation was used to accelerate recovery of muscle strength following exercise, but it didn't influence indicators of, of uh, muscle uh, soreness or, or delayed onset muscle soreness. So uh, that's it's, it's very good for uh, if you're involved in working out. Like it also increases, as I say, uh, you know the uh, immune factors. Of course, immunity tends to work out. Uh, also, there are some studies that indicate ginger enhances in testosterone production because it increases the uh, uh, release of luteinizing hormone from the uh, pituitary gland. Luteinizing hormone is a gonadotrophin which dictates the uh, rate of synthesis of testosterone at the level of the Leydig cells in the testes. Uh, also, by reducing oxidative stress and lipid peroxidation in the testes, it also increases the uh, ability of... Uh, of uh, of, te of testosterone, I'm, I'm sorry, of ginger to help uh, increase uh, testosterone levels. Uh, you know, I wouldn't count on it as a specific testosterone booster, but it's good to know that ginger, uh, you know, favorably affects uh, testosterone synthesis. So uh, that's about it for ginger. There's a lot more to ginger. Uh, I probably, uh, especially in relation to exercise, and uh, bodybuilding effects, but you know, I, if I included all those effects in this video, the video will go on too long. Uh, as I said in past videos, I don't know how anyone could sit and watch a video for an hour and a half, and some of these things go on for two and a half, three hours. Some of them are, are called podcasts. Uh, I realize that you can watch it a little bit at a time, but 
I don't know, I can only speak for myself. I don't have any time, even if I break up the time, to watch three-hour podcasts, even if I watch 20 minutes at a time. I don't have time for that. To me, those things are ridiculous. They're insane, especially when you consider that research shows that the human attention span for videos maxes, maxes out at 18 minutes. Now, those past 18 minutes of any particular video, no matter what the subject, the mind starts to wander in most people. You lose focus. So I try and aim uh, at videos that are between 18 and, and no more than 25 minutes. A couple of my videos have gone videos have gone over than that because the subject matter was very complex. Uh, as an aside, I, I got a recent comment <laughs> under one of my videos, but I, had to, I can't help laughing even now. This guy, uh, some sort of uh, attention deficit disorder person, he says, asked me if I could limit my videos to 10 seconds. I mean, anyone who watches my videos knows that uh, nobody in the world can present this information. Even the fastest talking people on earth could not, uh, you know, put this all in uh, everything I say within 10 seconds. The guy was a lunatic. Uh, I don't make videos for attention deficit people. Those are the people that can't handle them more than two minute, three minute videos. That's for somebody else to do. My subject matter doesn't uh, doesn't uh, fit into that. Let's say, but you know, if you want more information, I, I like I say, I, I will be doing in my applied metabolics newsletter. Right, Bruno, say hello. In my applied meta, oh, he's so wild, this guy. In my applied met, in my applied metabolics newsletter. I'll be doing a full feature on ginger and it's very and uh, much more information on its health effects. But again, it would take too long to. I just wanted to give you an overview of ginger because uh, that was requested by somebody under my one of my comments. And I do take uh, requests. I do take into consideration requests for future video topics. So feel free to list them under my videos. If you want further information about nutrition, exercise science, hormonal therapy ergogenic aids, anti-aging research you can use today, fat loss techniques that really work, supplement science, which ones work, which ones don't, women's health and fitness, many other topics. No, no, Bruno, oh. no digital publication covers as many topics as, uh, as my Applied Metabolics newsletter. So subscribe today at www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, I'll send you a personal invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page, where each day I post new information on nutrition, exercise, and medicine. I also have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics uh, website, where current subscribers only, not uh, not n non subscribers. I don't I don't answer unsolicited questions. You can send me short questions, which I'll answer as a bonus for you subscribing to my newsletter, just as a kind of a way of appreciating your subscription. Uh, please don't get carried away. I had one recent guy that was uh, sending me every question that popped into a head, his head. Seven days a week, he'd ask me 10 questions a day. Uh, you know, you don't get that for 10 bucks a month. I'm sorry, nobody on, nobody on this planet is going to do that. So, you know, I got a limit to a certain amount. You know, if, if, I, if I did that for every subscriber, I would have no time to write even a single word. So and that's ridiculous. But anyway, uh, I think most people are a little bit more sensible than that. So... Uh, again, you know, uh, it's 40 to 50 pages. <clears throat> I've seen other uh, you know, digital publications on nutrition, exercise, and they're pretty good. I mean, they, you know, they, they are scientifically based. The problem is that they're very, very difficult to read. They include a lot of technical terms. They're not written by professional writers. In contrast, I've been writing for over 40 years with uh, about 10,000 art published articles. I was a science editor of Muslim Fitness for over a decade. I know how to write. I know how to translate technical scientific information for the public. I guarantee it, anyone with a sixth grade education will be easily able to understand my Applied Metabolics newsletter. So subscribe today. Uh, if you want to have the best friend you'll ever had, have, again, www.appliedmetabolics.com. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. Thank you for, Bruno won't stop barking. Take, take care. Thank you for listening.